For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the loving kindness of the Most High, he will not be shaken. That's all sweet, right? Listen to this. Your hand will find out all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. You will swallow them up in your wrath, and fire will devour them. Their offspring you will destroy from the earth. The Bible talks about taking babies and dashing them against the rock. And their descendants from among the sons of men. And that is our God. Because remember I told you, God takes the wicked and destroys their descendants. We talked about the Nephilim and how they're out there to destroy our race. That's why God does that. God told told Joshua to kill every man, woman, child, and beast. Because they were trying to take over his people. They weren't created by God. They allowed themselves to be handed over to the Nephilim and that type of bloodline. So the point is, is that it's the same God, right? See, God's green horse riders see no difference between the God of consuming fire and the God of love. Hebrews 12, 29 talks about the God of consuming fire. That, to me, is still love. He wants purity. We can't come to him unless we're pure. And I'm not talking about 99.9% pure. I'm talking 100%. 1 John 4, 8 talks about the God of love. God's green horse riders are the same. They offer their very lives as living sacrifices for the sake of others one moment. And the next moment they declare destructive judgment over a particular group of people. Are they schizophrenic? No. It is love to lay down my life for somebody But it's also love to judge that person if I really love them and I don't want to see them throw their calling away, number one, or go to hell. That is love. It gets messed up with the soul realm. They speak of God's mercy and of God's vengeful wrath in the same sentence in Psalm 59, 10 through 17, Psalm 102, 8 through 13. I just pulled this one right here. Isaiah 60, verse 10 says, In my wrath I smote you, but in my favor I had mercy upon you. It's the same God. It says his right hand, we learned about the right hand. His right hand will expose those who hate him. God's enemies are flushed out by truth, law, and judgment. They don't like it. They hate it. They say, let us cast their cords from us. They don't want to be tied down. Did I see it right that San Francisco has passed the gay law? They did something. They, They passed something. Gay marriage, that's what I meant. They passed it, right? Okay, they said, let us cast their cords from us. We don't want them to tell us we can't get married. That's exactly what Psalm 2 is talking about. They hate it. They won't abide by it. They can't hide for long. They can't hide for long because they're boiling on the inside. I will not obey that rule. See, his right hand forces you to be on one side or the other. You can't hide. No hide, no pretending. He says, even their offspring will be destroyed. None of their seed can remain. The sins of the forefathers, remember they're passed on from generation to generation, and what the forefathers sowed, they reap. So it's in them. Unless they know about it, unless they stop it, they're going to be a product of their father. That's why the children have to be destroyed. Verse 11 through 12, though they intended evil against you and devised a plot, they will not succeed. For you will make them turn their back. Now, I've been dying to bring this up because I love Exodus 23. This is the word that God gave me when I was in Nashville. The very first time he really ever spoke something very powerful to me. And I I broke this down. I've looked at several different things in here and I'm going to show you one. In Exodus 23 verse 27... He says, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. So it's the same thing, right? Turning their back. See, you turn your back to someone when you're running away out of fear. 
right? When the hornets are chasing you, right, Tim? <laughs> he stepped on them today, and he was gone, right? <laughs> so, go ahead. I want to show you the whole word, though. Look what it says. Now remember, I got spoken, this was spoken to me in Nashville. And I honestly believe the, the, the more this week went on and the more this was speaking to me, I believe you guys, what we were talking about, the building of the stones, I believe that this is a word to you also. Okay? Behold, I am going to send an angel before you to guard you along the way. <coughs> And to bring you into the place which I have prepared. The promises that he's spoken to us. Okay? You think we came together just by chance? I don't think so. Be on your guard before him though. Now look, he ain't going to take no disobedience. Not 99.9% .9 pure. 100% pure. Look what it says. <clears throat> Be on your guard before him. Obey his voice. Do not be rebellious toward him. For he will not pardon your transgression. Since my name is in him. But if you truly obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the, look what, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will completely destroy them. It goes on to say, You shall not worship their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their deeds, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their sacred pillars in pieces. But you shall serve the Lord your God, and here's the blessings of obedience. He will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. There shall be no miscarrying or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Thank you. <clears throat> I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come. And I will make all your enemies, there it is, turn their backs to you. I will send hornets ahead of you so that they will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites before you. So that's what the hornets drive out. But look what it says. I will not drive them out before you in a single year. Now that doesn't mean a year. It just means a time. That the land may not become desolate and the beast of the field become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little until you become fruitful and take possession of the land. Isn't that beautiful? What it's saying is, is when he gives us the land, the people that are doing the things that they're doing, worshiping their other gods, okay? Be it money, be it music, I mean, it doesn't have to be these little gods that they worship, but then they do have those too, okay? You, you cannot worship their gods. You have to totally destroy the way, for instance, for me, okay? I go into Nashville. I have to walk up and I have to tell all the singers that you are not pure, 100%. You're not pure. You've got songs that are about beer and you've got songs that are about Christ. So which one are you going to have? Pure water is what God's looking for, not hot, cold, hot and cold water. And they made that song about beer because they wanted to sell more CDs. They, the thing is, is the people on the top, they come to you and they say, well, I don't like your lyrics. You need to change your lyrics a little bit. Don't make them so harsh because it takes the spirit out of it. You have to make more soul lyrics. That's why I won't go until God says go because those people are going to be driven off. I've been told by Charlie that the majority of the people that are up in Nashville, and I believe this to be true, they're homosexuals. So they're the ones that have the high ground. Well, they're going to be taken off because 1 Samuel 14 shows me that I'm going to be able to take that mountain. I'm going to send that mountain because I've got clean hands and a pure heart. And my lyrics aren't tainted. But see, when you bow, see, the devil comes up to you when you're going up that mountain. He says, I know what you came for. Hey, I'll give it to you. 
but you got to bow down and worship me. And most people go, oh, okay. And they change their lyrics.